Hi, I'm Mary Ann Skaparis. Thank you, Dean. Um, Dean Fowler, for joining us here this afternoon to share with us um, a snippet of your journey with acute myeloid leukaemia. Well, I can remember Friday, I was at work on a Friday afternoon. Mm -hmm. I can still remember, I was a mechan an apprentice motor mechanic. I woke up that Saturday morning and I was sick. I couldn't stand up, I couldn't walk, I couldn't do anything. My wife decided to take me to the doctor. I went to the doctors. Doctor did blood tests. I was actually out at a race car meeting and my, my, the doctor called my mum and said, I want Dean back at my doctor's surgery at 8 o'clock on Monday morning. I don't want him to do anything exhausting. I need to talk to him. So I went back there on that Monday morning and the doctor said to me, I need you to go and see a physician. Doctor did a blood test and he says, we can't imagine anything, you know, you've most probably just got a middle ear infection, whatever else, and that's why you, you know, feeling a bit dizzy. He said to me, I'm going to do a uh, bone marrow aspirate on you, but we're only doing it as a precautionary. We did the bone marrow aspirate, he called me back in the next, on the Wednesday, I had to go back and see him, and I was virtually diagnosed with leukemia, AML leukemia. Actually the Thursday, the Thursday I got admitted to the Wesley Hospital, and I had a Hickman catheter put it, put in, mm. which horrified me. Mm. And then the Friday I started chemotherapy. So it was all quite one thing yep. after the other. Yep. All it quite was just quick a matter of, you know, and very surreal. Yep, very yeah. much so. So, you started initial chemotherapy treatment. I think I went on a week of full chemo, and then I had three weeks off, and then I went on another week of. Oh, I went into remission. Mm -hmm which was really good. Mm -hmm. And then I had another round of big ice just to tap it on the, the head. Mm -hmm. And then I went into remission again. Okay. And I was all good. That went on for a few months. And then I went back to work again. Mm -hmm. um, to your old job? To my old job again. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah, to, um, at, at the same place. I wasn't mm -hmm. doing the same role. I was in the office. Okay, so that your, <coughs> your employer accommodated? Very you. much so. Um, they trained me in the office, oh, which uh, being a service advisor. Lovely. Which yeah. is what I am now. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and I, yeah, that was sort of one of the positives, I suppose, of it uh, about being diagnosed. I sort of skipped a few years of my apprenticeship and I went into <laughs> being what I wanted to do anyway. You had a transplant. At what point in time, you know, through your through your journey with your treatments, did they did the doctor actually say to you? Well. You know, were you recommended to have one or were you offered to look, consider having one? About 12 months after my diagnosis, mm -hmm. which was in 97, mm -hmm. July 97, I went on a holiday mm -hmm. down to the snow and I actually, my bone marrow actually um, collapsed. I didn't actually relapse with leukaemia, I actually had um, hypodysplasia, mm -hmm. which is where the, transplant, where the bone marrow just dies. Now what they actually did from July to the 5th of December, I actually lived on blood transfusions, transfusions every day. That was every day. So your day. marrow wasn't producing anything? No, nothing. Okay. So I survived for, you know, five months. 5th of December, I had my bone marrow transplant in 1997. Um, and what was that experience like for you? I can still remember that day. Yeah. Poor was Lee. it an anticlimax? Yeah, I just... I just was so anxious. It was just like, I was anxious to do it, but I was anxious not to do it. You mm. know, if you could sort of imagine, I wanted to do it. I wanted to get over and done with, but I just couldn't do it, if you know what I mean. And docs had to give me some sedation because I was just, I didn't know what I wanted to you do. You were quite anxious. I was quite anxious. It what got, through, got you through that time, do you think? Family. Yeah. Family mm. and doctor's support. So, you know, emotionally, did you, did you put anything in place for yourself? Like, did you have a, yes. a prayer or a repetitious no, saying I... that got you through <coughs> those total body radiation in that day? I can still remember, I used to say to people, um, you know, they can keep feeding things out to me, but I'll just keep knocking them down and I'll just keep going and going and going. And there was just... That's just the way I was. I just kept a positive attitude the whole time. You know, I mean, I'm not saying that I kept a positive attitude. 
a hundred percent of the time. Mm -hmm. You have to have your bad days as well. You know, I can still remember days, very vaguely, where I was laying in bed and I just cried for all day. Mm. But that's just the way it was. You know, mm. you can't have your good days all the time. You know, yeah. I can remember days where all I wanted was KFC. You know, yeah. <laughs> I used to get Mum to go and get me KFC. I actually got discharged on Christmas Eve mm -hmm. um, to come home, and that's when it all started. All the rash and the, you know, the GVH the started. The GVHD yeah. of the skin. Yes, yeah. they treated me like a burns patient. Okay, so it was quite quite a, um, a significant dose of GVH. Yeah, and then it went to my bladder and. Okay, so you know, again, that must have been a trying time emotionally. What got you through that time? Family again. Yeah. My wife. My wife sat beside me, slept beside me every night. My teddy bear got me through it too. It's the only teddy bear in the world that I think gets a birthday present and <laughs> Grandma goes on holidays and brings him back things. So when you and Lee were in that time, did you ever have, you know, really uh, deep conversations about hopes and dreams and wishes and Yeah, we did. Mm. Yeah. 